Okay, we come to our 16th study of the full. We're at the number 95th full of the Bible. Proverbs 26, 4. And then number num number 96, Proverbs 26, 5. And again, the Bible doesn't want us to be full. Why I'm doing this study. But to realize even a saved Christian. We play the fool. And it's a shame. It's a sin. Proverbs 26, 4 and 5. Answer not a fool according to his folly. Least thou, least thou, the person who's reading this, also be like unto him. So you don't answer a fool with foolishness, for you will act like the fool. And you can't be stupid and foolish when dealing with a foolish man. And then when we look at the next one, answer a fool according to his folly. Least he, that's the fool, be wise in his own conceit. So you answer a fool foolishly, and he will not be any wiser. You got to know when and how to answer the fool. And how? Fools can turn, and some fools will not turn. Fool is an atheist, or a fool is someone who's first heard what you're telling them. Now, when you're in any public ministry, you're going to run into the fool. And there'll be ones that'll come up to you and they'll have questions. Oh, allergies, sorry. Now, it comes down to, is the question serious? Or is it a foolish question just to occupy your time and of no value, no sense? If someone were to come up to you, and I, I've never had this happen to me, but where did Cain get his wife? Well, from his father-in-law. But was that question asked for, I really want to know. Or was that question asked because, you know, I just want to waste your time, preoccupy you in something else. And when dealing with who we think to be a fool, is it really foolish? Or is it really a sound person who wants to know? Remember, a fool, as I said, he can be an atheist. Or he can be a fool that, you know, if you talk with him and deal with him wisely and correctly, he may get knowledge, he may get understanding, and he may get wisdom where he would too turn to God as his Savior or will listen. But we looked at fools that you spend time with them, you spend money with them, but they don't want to learn. And if you were to answer the fool foolishly, it could do more harm than good. And I guess this would be in the realm of sarcasm, which I do do. And it may be wrong. And I can't give you exact illustration because when in a public ministry, there's just so many that I have never had. And there are some that I have had that others did not. And there are some that's happened to me that's happened to other soul winners and dealing with people. And you got to pray to God for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding on how to answer the person you are. Because God knows their heart. We don't. So, answer not a fool according to his fault, at least thou also be it like unto him. So, if you answer a fool foolishly, you're looking foolish. On people who are watching and listening. Answer a fool according to his fault, at least he be wise and own can see. You got to give the proper answers. And that's really all I can say. Verse 6, we keep going. He that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool 
cut us off the feet and drink his damage. And back in the times in the Bible, a message, the early times of, of America with the Pony Express and the Postal Service, and in wartime, the king would send a messenger to the troops, and the, the captain of troops would send a messenger back. And according to the Bible, there were some men that were good, they were bearers of good tidings, and there were some men that they were the bearer of bad tidings. But that's not the case here. If you're to send any message, any time, doesn't say war, and you put it in the hands of the fool, he that sends the message by the hand of the fool cutteth off the feet. Whose feet? And drinketh damage. That fool may lose the message, and it's important enough to send the message out. There has been times in the United States Postal Service, and I guarantee postal services throughout the world, where they have found that the male man, the male woman, has not sent the packages. Some they have found it in their own apartment. Some they found put into dumpsters. Some to whatever ways disposal that they did not have to deliver the mail. That man's a fool. There were greeting cards. There were checks to be paid. There was a letter, you know, to a sweetheart. There was a lover, you know. And put it into the hands of a fool. It never got delivered. It never served its purpose. So, and he may not deliver it in time. It may not come. It may be lost, forgot, anything that's improper. A male person destroying the package while delivering is a fool. Rough housing a package that when it comes to you, it's been damaged. That's the work of fools. When you get a letter, we've had several times where their machines have ripped the letter open and destroyed the contents thereof, the postal service is found to be a fool. In any way that that letter gets to the recipient or does not get to the recipient, if it's not in the way that it was handed to the person to deliver it, that's foolish. And the Bible speaks about that. Proverbs 26, 8. He that bindeth a stone in a sling. Okay, before we go any further. You've all seen a slingshot. Kind of David used to get Goliath. Now, what the illustration is, you take a slingshot. You put the rock in it. And you glue the rock in the sling or you sew the, the sling around the lock so when you let go the rock stays the rock is not going to be propelled the rock is going nowhere but attached to that sling so is he that gives honor to a fool if david would have grabbed that rock and if he would have tied it to his sling that rock would never kill Goliath. it would not fulfill the purpose intended whether it be target practicing, whether it be David getting a lion and a bear to protect his sheep, or it, whether it, again, practicing or taking down Goliath, using the military against the enemies. If you were to bind that rock in that sling, there is no purpose at all. You are defenseless. And your military strength you have no offense. And so is honor to a fool. A sling is used to sling stone. Duh. But sewing the stone, the stone in the sling defeats the sling usability. You can't use it. It's a stupid and worthless weapon. That's like if you were to take a gun, point a gun, say stop or I'll shoot, and you ain't got no bullets in it. 
or when you put the bullets in the cartridge or you put the bullets in, in the chamber, you put glue in there and you seal the chamber. And when you pull the trigger, it don't do. Again, imagine David super gluing his rock to his sling against the giant. So the honor to the fools is, which America does, America honors fools. They name streets after fools. They name buildings after fools. They build monuments and statues in fools. They give in platings and plates and bronze and all kinds of things to fools in public parks, in schools, in ceremonies. And with that illustration there, it's useless. We're going to lift up. We're going to have this man's day. The guy was a fool, according to the Bible. But we're going to lift it up. It doesn't give God no glory. It doesn't give Jesus Christ no honor. And it fulfills no purpose of the Holy Spirit. And it does nothing for your country. We are in a nation right now. We're taking down Civil War monuments and Civil War men that fought great battles. But we have lifted up men who do drugs. We have lifted up people who are fornicated and adulterized. We have lifted up men who have not been faithful to their wives. We have lifted up men and women who have no value to the education system. Yeah, and that's no value. It has nothing to do with nothing. America's going that way. Verse 9. As a thorn goeth up into the hand of a drunkard. I've been drunkard. I've had injuries while being drunk, and you don't feel it. And I used to tow uh, automobiles my younger years, worked for a towing company, and I pull up to the thing and be a big wreck, and there's a drunk guy, DUI, and go, <laughs> he's laughing and all that. And be like, well, where's the occupants of the car? They went to the hospital. In many cases, I've seen where drunkards got injured and they don't feel it that night, that day. They don't feel it the next day. So as a drunken man in his, in his drunkenness of the alcohol affecting his body, he, he's gotten a thorn in his hand. That hurts. Without the alcohol. I mean, if I go pick a rose and I, and I get that thorn, ow! I'm going to feel it right away. But with a drunkard, he's not going to feel it right away. So is a parable in the mouth of fools. Sore can get affected, uh, infected, excuse me. A drunkard doesn't feel the pain at first, but later. Listen to a fool and his story. The damage he has done may not be known to later. And I have watched Christian documentaries through life and Christian movies. And did not know that they were wrong and they affected my mind later. And what this verse is telling us, I may be inebriated, forgive me if I said the word wrong, in my Christian walk. And I allow something to come into me that I don't feel. It may be wrong, it may be hurtful, it may be harmful later on. And I'll tell you what, one of the things was I used to watch documentaries on whales, according to the story of Jonah, how men would survive being eaten by a whale, by being digested by a whale in the cavity of the nose of the whale, the nasal cavity. And come to find out, when you read and study the Bible, Jonah did not survive the whale, he died and went to hell. So when I watched those documentaries, I said, ooh, oh, I realized that every time I read that story, those stupid documentaries come into my head. And I go, no, 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 that's wrong. And that injury that that drunk can get in his hand or in his body anywhere, it might produce an infection that's going to affect him later if he had not taken care of it right away. And Christians get involved in, with all these tribulation movies, and I'm going to beat the beast movies, and they don't realize that the Christian is not going through the tribulation period. The tribulation period is not for the Gentiles, and man is not going to conquer the beast. 
the Bible says, unless you receive that mark in your head, forehead or in your hand, you're not going to shop no matter what you can do to the system. And then people get perverted and they, you know, what's wrong with the modern Bible? What's wrong with the modern church today? The nonsense that they put in you that later on, as you grow as a Christian, has affected you and infected you. And sometimes those scars don't come out. I have been studying the Bible and I have read the Bible and I don't just read the Bible. I study the Bible. I mark the Bible. And there are things I've done from my early years of Christianity growing up in the Lord that still affect me today. There's still an infection that's in me when I know what the Bible says and I know what the Bible's right on that subject and what I have put myself to in an inhibited state as a young Christian. Oh, that's Oh, that sore comes back. It's like when you got body aches and pains. Oh, I can tell the weather's the weather's going to change. It's going to rain. It's going to snow. And when I come to a particular part in the Bible, oh, that oldness comes back. You gotta be careful what we do as young Christians. We gotta be careful even before we're saved what we get ourselves involved. You know. I mean, I grew up in the Catholic Church, and still, every once in a while, that crucifixion comes in the picture of my head. It's been blended there for all the years I didn't know. So, be careful what you watch. Be careful what you hear. Be careful what you take. Be careful what you touch. Be careful where you go. Eye, ear, nose, throat, mouth, hands, feet. Because it may hurt you later. May hurt you later. Proverbs 26 10. Ooh. The great God that formed all things. So there's the creator. A creation, not evolution. We're not talking about evolution, but the great God that formed all things both rewardeth the fool and rewardeth the transgressor. Well, look at that. There's coming a day for Christians at the judgment seat of Christ. Your foolishness, if it's not put under the blood, will be wood, hay, or stubble. You will give an account of what we've studied so far and what we will study, Lord willing. How much you've gotten, how much have you gone back to get what has already been done, how much you look forward to what will be done, Lord willing. I'm not going to listen to this no more. You could have. I mean, it ought to get you one video. It ought to get you to watch all the video. And pray, say, Lord God, Lord willing, help him to finish these studies so I don't be the fool. But our foolishness as Christians will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. And there will be no reward. And those that are lost unsaved their foolishness will be judged at the great white throne and if there are no rewards for the christian for foolishness there will be no rewards for the lost foolishness is vain it's void it's no it doesn't produce nothing but foolishness it ain't going where the fool is fitted with transgressors a fool is a sinner Foolishness is sin. They will be rewarded. Not with good rewards. Not with pleasing rewards. Proverbs 26, 11. As a dog returns to his vomit. And I've seen that with my dogs. Dog throws up, turns around, goes back and eats it. <laughs> That's disgusting. Think about a human doing that. Did you know... Give you a little extra information here. Did you know as far as the Roman Catholic wafer that they say is the actual body of Jesus Christ? That actual wafer. And you can find this in the catechism. You can do a Google search. If you throw up that wafer, you take what they say is Christ. It's not. It's the Antichrist. 
You take it into your mouth, you throw that up. You are to pick it up, you are to dry it out, and you're to take it later. That's disgusting. That's a dog returning to his vomit. In the name of anti-Christianity. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Makes a complete circle. Makes a U-turn. He starts where he started. He ends where he started. And when we go back to what we said, answer not a fool according to his folly, at least thou also be like unto him. Answer a fool according to his folly, at least he be wise and can see. There is hope for the fool, but there's also really no hope for the fool. A fool that has said in his heart that there is no God, uh, you can go through 66 books. I don't know how many verses there are in the King James Bible, but you can you can do every single verse of the King James Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Most likely that fool is going to go back that there's no God. That's sorry. We are to train the fool in the ways of God, but as the public school system we talked about a couple lessons ago, you're just wasting money. Their heart is not in it. And they come up to you and question you with questions, and they're truly foolish. They're just trying to waste your time. They're trying to provoke you to something else. Satan is using them to prevent the gospel from actually being free. When you are dealing with a true fool. Because if he come up to your public ministry and he spends all day with the foolish questions, if you allow it, you're not to allow it. At the end of the conversation, he's going to still be the fool. And we looked at that before uh, about the contentions of a fool. Whether right or wrong, you both end up foolish. So, it's sickening. It's natural for any dog. But for a fool and his folly, it is gross. And it's natural for fools. As a dog is natural to eat his vomit, a fool is natural to eat his foolishness. And to others who see it, that's disgusting. Now, if you've been a dog owner, you like, uh, yeah, you're going to do it. And there's times you hope, oh, I'm glad no one came over. Or, you know, when you've had guests or people over, you see the dog is about, it's like, oh, no. Don't do it. <laughs> and they do it. Can you imagine the, the, the man that has a foolish son? Oh, no, no, don't, no, don't, oh, oh, he did it. And there's no joy to the father, no joy to the mother. When that kid, that child, that grandchild, just goes right back to his foolishness. It, it, it's a shame. Proverbs 26, 12. <laughs> Seest thou a man wise in his own cassette? Conceit, excuse me. Well, look how good I am. Look at my church. Our church, my church is the right one. What I believe is what I believe. You're not going to change me. This is what I've been taught. This is what I think. This is how I feel. You're not going to change me. Okay. See, is thou a man wise as own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. Now, look, now, there's a good fool. A fool is better than a man of pride and self love. A fool is better than a man that has self righteousness. You got a man that's stuck on himself. You are not going too far with salvation of the Lord. A fool has better chances of being saved than pride. 
A fool has better chances of being right with God than self-righteousness. You can deal with a fool, but you can't deal with religion. Or a religious man. There are people who come to my door to call Jehovah Witnesses. I've been every way around with them. I have been with the scriptures with them, and they even open up their little phone to King James Bible passages. I dealt with one guy. I said, listen, tell me. Did Jesus ever commit any sin? He said, no. I said, wait a minute. I said, hold on. Are you telling me? This is how the conversation went. Jesus was sinless. Yes. I said, are you telling me that your Jehovah Witnessism and you, you are both agreed on the fact that Jesus was sinless? I said, yeah. I, I, I just, I, well, I, I wanted to nail the guy that, I said, again, listen, I just want to make sure, I want to be positive that the statement that Jesus Christ is sinless is absolutely correct by you and by, uh, it's not a church, uh, the, uh, assembly hall, whatever they say. He goes, yeah. I said, then Jesus Christ has to be God. Because only God can be sinless. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's correct. So you're acknowledging that Jesus is God. Oh, no, no, no. Really? I met with an agnostic one day, and he came up to me, and he, and he you know, just talking. And you know, he half believes, and he half doesn't believe. And we came out of that conversation, he, and he told me, he says, I don't fully believe it, but I have listened to you, and I am more persuaded on the angle that there is a God. I just have not fully believed it, and I gave some gospel track, and, and I pray for him, I got in my prayer. I got more sense out of that agnostic than I did with the religious guy. That man is so high in his religion. Whatever religion it is, and, and they're just as worse as Catholic, because nothing can get over the barrier of the Catholic Church over God the Father and Jesus Christ, and to them, Mary. But I had better chances with somebody. Well, I'm foolish, I don't understand, but I'm willing to learn. I dealt with a guy one other time. He, he came up to me and said, well, you know, I'm an atheist. The guy was foolish because he didn't even know what atheism is. And when we finished that conversation for a while and talking to him and showing the scriptures, I said, sir, I said, I said, when somebody asks you now, you know, you're saved as such as this conversation began, I said, don't tell them you're atheist. He goes, why? I said, tell them you're an agnostic. Well, what's an agnostic? I said, you half believe in God and you half don't believe in God. Oh, yeah, I guess I do. But when you deal with a religion, staying firm right where I am. I am rooted and grounded in my religion. I am rooted and grounded in my education. I am recruited and grounded in evolution. I am rooted and grounded. Wow. I guess you're right. Yeah, I, I mean, not fully, but yeah, I heard what you said. And where's the difference? A man that's self-righteous, a man that's self-proclaimed, or the man to say, ooh, that sounds, yeah. I don't know what happened to those two men. So, here's a good fool, and I think there's only two or three of them in the Bible. A man that is always right in his eyes and judgment, though wrong, a fool has better hope. I dealt with another guy, religious guy. He never sinned. And told me because I acknowledge I sin. In 1 John 1, 9, if I confess my sins, that God is able to forgive me and to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Though I admitted that I was a sinner, I was going to hell. And he wasn't going to hell because he was completely sinless. That guy was on himself, high on himself. Look how great I am. But he couldn't see God and how great God is to his destruction. Now that one man compared to the two men that I talked to, one said he was an atheist and one said, I, you know, I'm an agnostic and they lean more to God. There are more hopes of them. 
And the man that walks away, look how great I am. He is the fool. The other two men, they come out a little bit of foolishness. I don't know what happened to them, but they came out with a little wisdom. They listened. A fool can be shown and see that he is a sinner. But the self-righteous man, oh, how great he is. So let's see, should we just stay in Proverbs 26 and move to 27? Uh, where are we at? We're at 30 minutes. All right, let's 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 do Proverbs 26. We leave it at that. Okay. I think it's a good place to stop right there. Proverbs 26, 4. 